Hello everyone, my name is Olabisi Adamu and I would like to share um, a secret with you tonight. I'm going to title it, Satan's Primary Place of Attack, or rather, Satan's First Place of Attack. So, um, the Holy Spirit revealed something to me a while ago about how the devil operates, how the devil attacks people, the first place of attack. The primary place of attack for the devil in the life of a believer. And um, he painted an illustration. First of all, let me read from um, 1 Thessalonians 5.17. The Bible says, pray without season. Hmm. Pray without season. Very short scripture, but very powerful. Why does the Bible tell us to pray without season? Let me explain this to you. If you understand the simple rule of prayer, you will ask why, right? The simple rule of prayer is that it should be done always. That's the only rule of prayer. It should be done always. Why? Why should we pray always? Imagine I'm on a street and the street has, say, about 50 houses. And I I intend to put out the lights in all the houses. I intend to cut them off from power supply. Right? And so I have just me and my two hands. And I have 20 to 50 houses on one street. How do I do it? You know, it would be a waste of time knocking one house going from one door to another, going to their meters and trying to cut off power supply. I would spend more time doing that. I may not even be able to finish it in a day. I can't even cover all the houses in a day. So what do I do? How do I, how do I cut them off from power supply? How do I do it simultaneously? I just have to go through the t- transformer. I just go straight to the transformer and pull out the plug. Cut off one wire and the whole street goes black. Cut off one wire and 50 houses are in darkness in one second. This is what the, the devil does. He doesn't have to go to, he doesn't have to, you know, go to your work and attack you there. Go to your marriage and attack you there. He doesn't have to visit all those areas. He just goes to your power source. He goes straight to the source of power, which is your prayer life. The minute the enemy can get you, can cut you off your power source, the minute the enemy can cut you off your prayer life, he has access to every other area in your life. So he doesn't waste time. If you want to know that you, in fact, the easiest way to tell when you are under attack is by weighing your prayer life. Just check your prayer life. Am I praying always? Or I pray once in a while. Am I praying always? What's your prayer life like? If it is dwindling, you are already under attack. Every aspect of your life is under attack. You don't need to check your marriage. You don't need to say, oh, but my husband is still at home. Oh, but my kids are still safe. Oh, but my business is still running. The minute he, it's only a matter of time before all those other areas are affected. The minute the enemy can cut you off your power source, which is your prayer life, your relationship with God. The minute he cuts that part off, he has access to every other thing. Every other area is on the palm of his hands. He doesn't need to go far. If you are still experiencing some level of comfort in your business, in other areas, it's only a matter of time. Trust me. So Satan's first place of attack is not your business. Satan's primary place of attack is not your marriage. Satan's primary place of attack is not your health. It's not your children. His primary place of attack is your source. Your source. Your source. Your source of power. Your source of covering. Your source of courage. Your source of protection. He goes to your source. What makes you 
what makes you stay healed what makes what makes it difficult for him to penetrate your marriage why is it so difficult for the devil to attack your children why is it so difficult for the devil to devour your business you are connected to a source that source is God. Your prayer life is on fire. So it's so difficult for him to affect other areas. You don't necessarily have to be praying concerning all areas. You just have to remain connected to the source. And every other aspect of your life is covered. Every other... I, so to be honest, sometimes I don't even remember praying specifically for the things that I enjoy today. I cannot remember praying a specific prayer for, I don't know. There are, some, there are some prayer points I don't have. There are some prayer points I have never had. There are some prayer points I don't have anymore. I just stay connected to my source. I, I, just, I just ensure that I am praying to God. I am talking to God. I am you know, I'm blasting in the spirit. I am praying in the spirit. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in my understanding. I just ensure I am doing that. And God covers every aspect of my life. God takes care of every aspect of my life. So your prayer life is your first place of attack. How to tell when you are under attack? Just check if you are praying. Once that source is there, once there's a disconnection in your prayer life, you are already under attack. It's only a matter of time. So you want to stay connected to your source. Listen, when the devil couldn't attack Job, when um, the Bible says in Job chapter 1 that the children of God were gathered and the devil came in the midst of them. It's, it's, it's amazing how the devil shows up even in heaven. To have conversations with God. And God was bragging about his son Job. And he said, have you considered my son Job? And um, the devil said, yes, I've actually gone there, but I couldn't attack him. I've been there. I couldn't attack him. And God said, why? He said, because you, you have protected everything that concerns him. You, you have an edge surrounding him. You have covered him. You are the protection he has. That's the reason why I can't attack him. I'm trying to look for this scripture. Job chapter 1. That's the reason why I can't go near him. Because of you. And the Bible did not say um, Job was, you know. Um, the, but the Bible made it clear that Job was a prayerful man. Job was a prayerful man. That was why it was so difficult for the enemy to attack, for Satan to attack him. Job was a prayerful man. The Bible says he even used to offer sacrifices for his children. In advance, he prayed. He was a prayerful person. He offered sacrifices in advance for his children, just in case any of them have offended God. I'm looking for this scripture. Job chapter 1. Just in case any one of them had, you know, fallen short in any way. Yeah, I'm there. Job chapter 1. It's just after Esther. The Bible says there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and ensured evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance were thousands of sheep, blah, blah, blah. And you know. Verse 5, he says, And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus this Job continually. Job was a prayerful man. Not just praying for himself, he was praying for his children. Praying in advance. Imagine you praying, you know, just in case my son has missed it. Job was a prayerful man. The Bible says he did this continuously, offering burnt offerings. He rose up early in the morning to pray. He didn't just rise up early in the morning to stretch. He rose up early in the morning to pray. And he did this continually. What Job was doing here in one word was praying. It was prayers. He was offering not just burnt offerings. He was praying. And this was why the devil could not attack. So the devil actually tried 
to attack his children. The devil actually tried to attack his business. The devil actually tried to attack him. But he couldn't do this because Job did something continually. Job was a prayerful man. He rose up early to pray continually. Your source your source is what keeps you protected. Your prayer life is what immunes you from the attack of the devil. So the minute the devil can get you to stop praying, you let your guards down. You have let your guards down. You are, you are exposed to attacks. The minute the devil can get you to stop praying, you are automatically exposed to attacks. And listen, the devil said, and when the Lord, verse 9 and the, verse 8, and the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? Verse 9, Satan replies, Doth Job fear God for naught? Has not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he had on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Imagine that means the devil considered his house. He considered his business. He said, but you have blessed the work of his hands. You have made a protection about him and about his house and about everything. You have surrounded everything concerning this guy. You have made it so difficult for me to penetrate his house, to penetrate him. But it wasn't because Job was a nice guy. It wasn't because Job was a good man. The Bible says he rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of his children. This man was a prayerful man. He rose up early in the morning to pray. He will send for his sons and sanctify them. How did he sanctify them? He will pray for them. He will gather his family and pray for them. This is why it was difficult. This was what the devil was talking about. That you, O oh God, you have surrounded this guy you have so padded him i can't break him are you like job are you are you a praying woman are you a praying man are you a praying man are you the type that gathers your children and you pray for them do you rise up early and do you do it continually because you see even Dave, even job understood the meaning of consistency he understood the power of consistency being consistent in prayer never letting your girts down never sleeping off because the devil is he is going up and down the devil does not go on holiday you know sometimes when we experience a little victory in one area of our life we just relax and say oh god even god understands look the minute you relax the devil is up walking ahead now he has relaxed or she has relaxed it's time to attack your relaxation can get you. In fact, just close your eyes for once. Imagine if God relaxed. Hey, can you just imagine if God says, look, I've been protecting all these people from the day I created this world. It's time for me to relax. Can you imagine God relaxing and just sleeping off a bit? You, you and I know what havoc the devil would do. I mean, he would, he would, he would create such havoc that even God will, will say, why did I just, why did I sleep? I just said I should sleep for one minute. If God has not gone to sleep, if the devil himself has not gone to sleep, if God cannot afford to do so for one minute because he's watching over you, you can't afford not to pray. You can't afford to be sleeping when you're supposed to be praying. You can't afford to be taking holidays from prayer. There's no vacation in the place of prayer. Prayer must be done continually. Prayer must be done continually. I do hope I've been able to charge someone out there. And, you know, you may just be wondering, why is the devil after my business? Why is the devil after my life? Oh God, the devil is here again. Oh, the devil is attacking my health. The devil, Look, forget all those places. Go back and connect to your transformer. Go back and connect to your source. Go back to your source. Put the plug back in. 
and connect to your source. It's only a matter of time. All the gowns that he has taken, you will take them back. All the areas he has touched, you can take them back. If only you can go back to your source. Prayer must be done always. If the devil attacks your prayer life, he has access to your life. He has access to your life. The reason why he can attack your family or the reason why he can attack one part and it's still evident that the devil is playing games with this area of your life is because he has gone to your prayer source. Your prayer is no more going on continually. It's now often. It's now sometimes. It's now when you are free. It's now when I can do it. It's no longer continually. It's no longer continually. I encourage you today to go back to your prayer source. Go back to your source. Connect. Put the plugs back in. Put the plugs back in. And pray always. Always is the simple rule of prayer. Always is the simple rule of prayer. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. If this has blessed you in any way, please feel free to like, share, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Share with your friends. Share with your loved ones. And listen over and over and over again. And I pray that God will give you the grace to pray continually. In Jesus' name, amen.